I've just I've got a few questions that I'd actually like to get informations on. Uh, it's just I I do understand that you guys uh, don't actually manage the waste, right? You mainly make it easier for the suppliers to make bookings, right? Which is which is freaking uh, amazing because. Um, which is why uh, uh, I'm very interested uh, to, to speak to Scrap because uh, we know you'd be able to provide us unique insights from your point of view because most, mm -hmm. of, most of the people that we're speaking to are waste management companies. So they would right. ob obviously have a different perspective from what perhaps you might have on the industry. I can, I can just quickly throw down all of the questions that I've got here. Uh, so first one is just demand and service usage post and pre uh, be uh, bre uh brexit whether you're seeing any issues there second I one is just uh are you noticing more companies struggling right uh are you able to see like these sort of statistics on your day-to-day -day business operations fourth question is uh what do you think the local authorities right and the government in itself excluding providing more awareness could actively do to spark more uh, uh, interest in waste management and uh, construction solutions at least with all of the warnings that we're hearing these days in regards to pollution and uh, plastic and the ocean as well yeah okay so uh, i'd like to start by saying that i joined the company earlier this year um in march um yeah. I'm, I'm on the marketing i'm managing the marketing side of things yeah so um uh, i will be able to give you good insights on um because it's a very close-knit business we're a small company it's a startup and we're still you know um we we do we do well i think for ourselves <laughs> but uh, yeah. that um still it's, it's it's a long way to go yeah uh, from an operations point of view um i think we've grown quite fast yeah we started off as a business that was just um uh, providing skips mainly yeah then we transitioned to a company that you know had a full suit of fleet for example uh, skips grab lorries um plant hire aggregates concrete yeah uh, portable toilet all of that so we have um all that uh now under our rules and we are we are working on adding you know there are more uh this is just some of the main ones and we do have further ones if, if a bigger construction company requires it so um we were then looking at the construction side of things yeah. now what we're doing is that we are also uh trying to launch a supplier software which could help the suppliers basically the waste management companies yeah uh which provide us all the which provide the all the construction equipment or hire to our clients yeah so for them, it's easier to manage uh, where they have sent their drivers to or what is the best route they can take through optimization, um, managing their own carbon footprint, seeing that, okay, what what is the, their, uh, how has the carbon offset been for their, for the business, um, uh, trying to, you know, trying to manage zero to landfill. Uh, obviously, we, we see that recently, the UK was in, uh, under fire for, um, you know, disposing of waste uh, in Turkey and in other com uh, in other countries. Yeah. So that's something that uh, that was alarming. So what we're doing is we are trying to get companies to achieve net zero and to help with their sustainability goals. Um, bit by bit, we have we we we're trying to do more in terms of sustainability as a business as well. Yeah. Um, and overall when when you when you see how we have transitioned as a company so you know i mean when i say it it, it, it obviously looks very relevant in the current times but yeah. what happened is that uh, post covid obviously and with the with the increasing demand for the for being more environmentally aware and friendly yeah. uh, especially in the construction business which is not very uh, environmentally friendly yeah. and it has always uh, it's one of the businesses in the uk which which does get under fire a lot for yeah um one of the most uh i shouldn't say like one of the businesses that creates a lot of pollution but i mean it is what it is right that's that's the reality of it so we're trying to do as much as we can yeah. from our end uh on both ends the construction companies end and the waste management uh, uh, end to make sure 
that we reduce we help the companies reduce waste yeah and our supply the software is completely free yeah our customer portal is completely free yeah. so it's not like we are charging them anything yeah so um our basic business model is a marketplace yeah and but obviously the i wouldn't say a by product but a very good um resultant of all of that is that we are able to provide companies a free software that that can help them with their uh, landfill and can help them achieve their sustainability goals yeah yeah and that is all that i've learned uh, in my time at scrap yeah um, yeah Oh. I think I hope that answered the question. <laughs> it definitely helped. It absolutely helped. And I've got one another question. Actually, I've got a lot of questions for you. I'm not sure if you would have enough time. <laughs> All right. So I'm sure you've heard about the current HGV driver shortage in the UK caused by... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I read on Twitter because I mean, I'm not really, I'm not actively involved in that. Yeah. So I I might not be able to comment on that because you know I'm marketing side of things. Yeah. So I might not be able to comment on that. I've only read about it. So all right, to all be right. honest. All right, let's yeah, let's, I, I <laughs> okay, let's let's leave that out the way. So in terms of land, landfill, do you notice improvements or are, are you getting positive receptions from companies? It's, it's a, yeah, it's a feature that we have just recently introduced. Yeah. Uh, on our portal. Uh, it's it's still under work, so we have yet to receive a feedback from companies. Yeah, and with landfills as well, w one of the main issues there is that it it's very difficult to get data from landfills. How do you guys manage to integrate that and make it so seamless for the companies that integrate with uh, Scrap to make use of it? Yeah, so um, our commercial director Nathan. He is the one basically looking into it and he's trying to see that how can there may be a formula of some sort or some sort of thing that uh, some sort of mechanism from which they can derive how how much landfill uh, is the company saving or how much uh, emissions, are, uh, how much of how much offset landfill offset is happening yeah. or how much carbon offset is happening. Yeah. So um, our commercial director who's also who also looks after the social value and sustainability. Yeah. Uh, the company, he's, he's the one actively involved in that. Yeah. And are you noticing uh, assistance from the local council, the government? Are, are they helping scrap in any way to actually achieve these goals? Because for the benefit of the whole country, if, if if you guys do manage to achieve it, then it's only positive a, a positive environmental impact from there on then, because obviously you'd be a, a key uh, player in helping companies to reduce their carbon footprint. So is, is there any interest from local authorities to facilitate scrap? We did, we did get in touch with Brent Council earlier this year yeah. and we did a letter pick with Brent Council where we um, had volunteers from our company. Yeah. Uh, Brent Council was involved and I think there was another company who provided the skip that was involved. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are trying to actively engage the councils yeah. to comment on whether they're being very helpful is something that I don't know <laughs> at the moment really yeah. because um, what we're doing is quite in-house at the moment. Yeah. We would definitely ap appreciate, We, I think we want the government to, to, to you know, be more proactive that way yeah. where it aids in the entire process. Yeah. Uh, not just us, but also other construction companies making it easier for them to yeah. Um, achieve their sustainability goals and to you know to enable them to to give them more um, pathways or more platforms to yeah. which they can make sure that they're not polluting or they're not harming the environment yeah so the government to be a bit more involved i think yeah there's still more room yeah. for it to get involved for example now if, if you had a say to anyone or someone in government what what would be your comment on assisting and facilitating waste management efforts in the uk I think we feel like the industry, so we are one of the, I would say that Scrap is, you know, pioneering the construction hire app and an app that lets you manage your waste. Maybe if the government could encourage a more digitized way of do, doing things uh, and you know moving the construction industry from being so traditional it's because it's still it's still currently very traditional it's still on the very end of the adaption spectrum if you if you ask me so if they were to aid 
construction companies or waste management companies to, to you know, uh, be more tech savvy, be more smart with how they're doing business, uh, maybe by using digital uh, technology or, or any other way, maybe that would help yeah. in enabling, uh, you know, that sort of uh, environment or that sort of change in the industry. Yeah. Because I think it's high time that the, the you know, construction industry saves on the resources that that are wasted so much. So yeah, I mean, that's our aim as business as well. That's so I think it, it, it just aligns it, <laughs> with what we're doing. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, your comments on technology and the industry being very traditional. Uh, like, what what do you notice in terms of the industry and how it currently does business, uh, and how it could do business in the current Very times? small example, but you see how how, for example, um, for construction hire businesses companies construction companies or, or contractors if we are, if we are to talk about let's let's talk about smaller or medium builders right yeah. medium sized builders what they do is they usually uh, for example they go from company to company calling up their um the skip companies or construction hire companies asking for their rates and then seeing that okay which one is more cost efficient yeah and they're looking to reduce their costs yeah um and they don't realize how much time and effort and maybe um, resource they're wasting in that. Yeah. What they, when they can simply be more smart about it and look at companies where, where, you know, look at companies who are more, act, I mean, even if skip high companies or construction high companies are charging a little extra, but they're more committed to their net zero targets and they're more committed to sending no waste to landfill yeah i think that is what the traditional company should really ideally be looking at yeah you know not on saving costs yeah but on making sure that they're doing business in a way which is responsible yeah. and more environmentally aware yeah um there was this article um on i think construction news or construction wire and um I, I don't seem to recall who, who the person was, but um, I, I, it stuck with me what they said was that it's high time that we stop doing something like just doing good or doing better is not going to be enough for construction industries. They need to start making more proactive efforts and they need to make sure that they adapt circular economy models. And uh, instead of... because. At Scrap, internally, we don't call it waste management, we call it resource management because yes. we believe that, you know, things can be recycled and reused and um, for things that that, uh, that can't be uh, that can't be recycled, per se, uh, they shouldn't still be going to landfills. Like, so we're trying to make it into a circular economy model, we're moving towards that, that's our aim. Yep. But uh, I think construction companies should be looking at something similar where they're, they're being more responsible about the environment, but where they're looking at these sort of um, circular economy models or, uh, you know, more environmental friendly models for their businesses. Yeah. So that, that would be good. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of circular economy model, maybe perhaps the lack of adoption there is, uh, I, I might be wrong, uh, so I'm hoping you could correct me if possible. Maybe perhaps the la lack of uh, adoption there is because the companies feel like they would be making less profit. But, yeah, but, that's that's obviously the case, right? Like I said, that they're trying to reduce costs. Yeah. And when you're trying to reduce costs, you're looking at your bottom line. Yeah. The first one, though. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to make companies look at the triple bottom line, which is people, profit, people, and planet. So which which basically transgresses their own the you know their company's interests the community's yeah. interest and the interests of the planet as a whole. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I think I do agree that companies who are still stuck in that traditional thing are, are still trying to, you know, uh, maybe make more profit margins or, um, but I think it, it's it's time where we started doing things more ethically and more responsibly as businesses, not just yeah. not just in construction, but all businesses, yeah. um, the, the warnings, uh, the report that was issued 
of the recent environmental report that was very alarming. Yeah. So I think that's something that the companies can and should definitely learn from and, you know, change the ways they're doing business. Yeah. And and uh, I'm sure you must agree with with the use of, of, of technology. It's absolutely possible to not just make it more ethically and uh, sustainable, but to also make it profitable, right, in, in some sort of way for the companies to... Yes. Uh, to be able to manage the resources uh, uh, as properly as possible. Yep. Um, not to sound, um, not to come back to my company, <laughs> but oh, the no, thing is that obviously fine. I need to talk about scrap. So I'll talk. I'll tell you about what we are offering as a business. Yeah. Scrap basically does the dirty work for you of contacting yeah. suppliers because you already have that sort of database where. We know which companies offering which rates. We connect local companies. So, for example, if you're living in Brighton, what we'll do is we'll connect you with suppliers in Brighton who are giving you the best rates possible. But at the same time, we also thoroughly wet our suppliers. Yeah. So we make sure that um, they are they are clean on their you know net zero targets and they're not uh, sending any waste to landfills yeah. so we it's a it's a two-way thing where where we're covering both the ends of the spectrum for the construction companies and at the same time what we do is we let construction companies to manage um orders to different sites yeah. with route optimization so for example if one of your for example if a construction company is headquartered in london but they're they have different sites in uh, bristol let's say manchester leeds so what we'll do is we'll connect all those different sites to suppliers that are available in their nearest postcodes and send them there. So this way we are helping them be resource efficient in terms of time, in terms of cost, in terms of, uh, you know, saving a lot of fuel because obviously you're not sending suppliers somewhere from Leeds to Manchester. You're just sending a local supplier to a local, um, to a local company or yeah. local site. Yeah. So yeah, that is, that is how basically the companies can maybe, yeah. Go ahead and move forward. This yeah. is just a step. This is one step, yeah. maybe in the right direction. We we hope so. That that is crazy, and that 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 is a very interesting insight. I did not expect that at all. Um, <clears throat> so just going back to one of your previous comments uh, on construction companies calling skip companies and how you feel like that's a waste of time. What do you think a better solution is and I obviously know that Scrap is one of the best contenders out there. <laughs> yeah, so, my, so, my answer is really Scrap. Scrap is the best solution out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you think uh, is, is the best solution for them to stop wasting time, right? To stop calling skip companies. And not just that. I think an emphasis and... Uh, sorry, an emphasis and awareness to them to actually like do you feel that it would be helpful to actually show these companies whoever they are how much time they're wasting and how much money that time costs them and what they could do with that time instead do, do they know that yeah. they could boost their productivity whether they know or they don't know that's something that's obviously something i can't answer for them but the thing is that 100 percent for every company out there construction company out there they do they they will i think they should be aware that yeah. there is something that they could be doing differently yeah. some things that um maybe in terms of supply maybe in terms of uh, how they're managing their waste yeah. maybe in terms of how they are procuring their materials or procuring their construction hire equipment or maybe in terms of how they're managing their resources or people yeah. Yeah. so there is always one thing or the other that companies can do better yeah so yeah uh, other than that, yeah, I would say that use scrap because yep. it's a great yeah, <laughs> <solution>. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you on that. And uh, it, it, one last question, so I don't keep it already. Um, why do you think in the UK and probably for the most of Europe and uh, the, the continent, the, the, the whole world, right? There, do, there doesn't seem to be an active marketplace for local waste uh, management. S scrap is really one of the only ones in the UK w with a few others. And in America, um, I think th th there's a few there's a few startups popping up in America. Um, 
I would oh, freaking know. Uh, it's the name's gone through my head. <laughs> okay. So you asked me that why aren't there any? Yes. So w w what do you think is the issue? Because for example, in in restaurant management and restaurant delivery, there's there's Uber Eats and there's Just Eats, uh, which is available. For yeah. car hire, oh, we've got Uber again, another contender, and and a few of us there, uh, boat and whatnot. But in actually waste management, where the same thing could be done, no one has really taken any sort of active interest to to help to facilitate. And it is a big issue. It's a it's an issue that won't go away, right? It's an issue that most uh, companies, like you previously said, uh, would try to avoid right f for the purpose of making higher profits uh, profit margins so like why do you feel like or what do you think in regards to why there's a lack of interest in that industry why um, it's why it's still I traditional like, sorry yeah yeah I, I i get your i get i think i understand your question yeah the thing is that the industry as a whole be it in the uk or in europe what it is, it's, it's very late. It's very uh, laid back and it's very fragmented. Yeah. Uh, so obviously when an, when an industry is very fragmented, yeah. it's obviously later. Um, it's, it's one of the late adapters. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and it, it's not very, it's not, it, it hasn't so far picked up on that pace yet yeah. of what to potentially do with technology. As soon as um, more companies start to realize that, yes, they could be doing so much more with with technology and well we are here to show them how to do that yeah. but um at the same time uh if they if they could realize that that'd be nice because uh you know as soon as you start becoming a bit more um in one mentally aware you need to you need to let go of some of your profits or you know some of your costs you need to let go of because uh they come, uh, being being more environmentally friendly being green uh, might not always come for a price, but maybe if you're if you are trying to change the, your ways, initially it might start. It, it might cost you more. Yeah. I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about just construction hire yeah. or waste management. But for example, if a, if any waste management company is making sure that they are not sending any of their waste to landfill, yeah. so they will charge you a premium for that, as opposed to a company who who doesn't really care about that, right? Yeah. So they will the other company a is being more responsible so they'll have to make sure they'll have to have more stringent um, processes in place whereas company b won't so obviously it's a it's a trade-off of sorts yeah. um and yeah i think i think companies really really need to see that it is more like need of the hour now yeah. Yeah. and need to start changing and adapting faster it's just a problem it's just a matter of when they start adapting yeah. And and sorry, just to get back on one of your comments on the on the industry being very fragmented. How how do you think this can be solved? Right? It, it, do do we need assistance from the government? Uh, is assistance required from local authorities? How, how what is the best way to 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 resolve I don't, that? I wouldn't, um. So the best way to solve, I would say, we're still on our path to discover what really is the best way to solve it, but. Mm. We have done so by introducing a marketplace. Marketplaces are have proved to be a great model um, in e-commerce, in fast fashion, in uh, uh, in you know, like you said, in the food industry. It's, it's amazing in the car industry. You can see that uh, the, the car industry has loads. It's, it has the shared economy model. It has the gig economy model. Yeah. Um, uh, now you can you can see more emerging models like ride hailing and all those models. Yeah. So um that's you know looking at maybe learning from other industries yeah. could be one way yeah, yeah. that is freaking amazing oh, oh freaking oh uh oh memo thank you very much i really appreciate the interview <laughs> to be fair i didn't think we would be we, we would have the chance to cover so many bases right and uh i, I couldn't be happier with what we've got here that's 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 i mean happy to help um i was just wondering like what does what would do and you know what exactly is your company about because um i was uh, i was looking at your instagram i was looking at um what you guys are doing at the moment and it looked pretty good yeah uh, and 
yeah i mean i i would i would like to touch base on that i mean as in we scrap is always looking to you know yeah. for brand partnerships yeah. or something of that sort so well you could say we're a very 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 smaller version of scrap um uh, hopefully uh, we could assist uh, in the industry one day uh, but f for now we're just we're we're a very mini version of scrap uh, just just trying to get something out there Right, yeah. So, what exactly is your aim with Vapla? So, with Vapla, it's an e-commerce marketplace where we use GIS, uh, uh, geographical information systems, well, latitude and longitudes, based on postcodes to to provide equipment hire and purchases. So, we do this by allowing like suppliers to add locations, so you can add as many locations. But the difference there is you add locations by by uh, drawing a map on it on a uh, sorry by drawing a geographical reference on a map right mm -hmm. so that that would obviously show that all your products are available in that location and mm -hmm. that that's that's pretty much it the the end game for Vava is just to create a marketplace an app marketplace right where third parties can come together and build construction apps that would help uh, hopefully help to push the industry uh, as fast as possible again huh? we, we are very small right uh, nothing big is being done uh, at the moment uh, we're just trying to see the best way to approach that okay so um, maybe in future when when Wabwa is a bit big maybe like maybe make we could you know get together and do some sort of brand partnership or maybe wabwa you know uh yeah. in in terms of our when scrap working together yeah. maybe that could be a thing absolutely. in the future Ab ab absolutely absolutely um yeah I, I don't see why not um me personally i i believe that partnerships is the best way to like to solve anything and everything so in terms of the technology and the software we're not we're not out there yet uh, maybe in the next six months in terms of marketing we've got i think we've got about a team of 10 just they've been preparing marketing content for the past year and a half uh just oh. waiting for the waiting for the software to be released so all of that can be kicked in but at the moment it's just we're lo laying we're laying dormant waiting for engineers to finish and to right. do tests and whatnot scrap, scrap is available on Procore. it's crap is also um you know it's, it's integrated with pro core index um so yeah it would be nice to be associated with bob as well yeah. once you guys go live yeah yeah see? i don't see why not absolutely uh <laughs> that's only if you provide me another interview though because i loved your insights that's fine let's let's uh, catch up sometime to uh, sometime soon or sometime later whenever uh, maybe your software is out yeah we would like to see you know what 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 has um yeah. in store for us yeah. as well yeah yeah perfect all right yeah all right thank you so much all right then